Hello everybody, it's Julia here from the Highly Sensitive Tarot. And I'm back today with another video. Um, this will be the first in a series of three, maybe four videos. And um, today I'm going to be showing you my Oracle deck collection. Um, I realise, well, just recently I've been sat looking at my Oracle decks because I don't use them that often to be honest I use my tarot cards an awful lot more and um, I was sort of sitting going through them really and realized I'd got a lot of really nice decks that I don't use um, and also I think I've had my channel for just over two years now and I've never sat down and sort of catalogued my collection of oracle decks or tarot decks and I'd really like to do that um, so I hope it's of some interest to to you, the viewers that are watching, all you lovely people. Um, but this is partly this video for me. <laughs> it's partly just to catalogue and record my collection so far. So I've got about 30 decks of Oracle cards, I think. Not that many. Um, they're all, I think they're all pretty much mass market decks. Um, so anyway, without further ado, the first, I, I shall probably show around about eight decks per video, so we'll see how we get on. So the first deck that I want to show you is the Power of Surrender um, deck. This is a beautiful deck, actually. It um, comes in this box. It's by uh, Judith, Dr. Judith Orloff. Um, as I said, it's a mass market deck, 52 card deck to transform your life by letting go. Many of you will have heard of Judith Orloff, I'm sure. She's written some fantastic books. Um, and this, this deck doesn't come with a guidebook. Um, all of the words that you would want for the deck, for the cards, are on the cards. And um, as you can see, they're beautiful. They're all just surrender to something. Really, really, really nice deck. I found, um, I do actually use this deck quite a lot myself, particularly when I'm feeling down or stressed out or overwhelmed. Um, or overly emotional, I think, sometimes, you know, a little bit emotionally dysregulated. I think this can help to bring me back to, um, you know, the core of the problem, what's really wrong, rather than my brain catastrophizing everything. <laughs> so, um, like we've got here, surrender to spirit. Once you've done everything you can to achieve a goal, turn the situation over to the divine. Let spirit work its magic for you. And we've got surrender your ego, cultivate gratitude, be of service to others and come from your heart. A big ego can work against you, but humility will further your goals. Surrender the drama. Look, see, these are brilliant, really, aren't they? Surrender obsessive thinking. <laughs> Surrender procrastination. It's like this deck could have been made for me. <laughs> so, so that's the first deck, The Power of Surrender. Really, really nice deck. We'll go from that beautiful deck to um this one which is the dark mirror deck it's um comes in this box here it's by laura sava i think that is it's a low scarabio deck a spiritual mirror for those who are not yet shining in the light but are still surrounded by darkness um comes with this little guidebook and um, this is not a deck, even for real beginners, I wouldn't say. This is a real deck of shadow work. And um, 
I think to get the most out of it, you need a fair degree of um, self-understanding um, and pr maybe even um, an understanding of kind of psychology and processes of um, growth, really. I think this this book it get, takes you through the stages of grief and loss um you've got stages of anger acceptance denial bargaining depression so yeah this this takes you through quite a process really um the cards themselves are quite dark um this is not a deck that I get out very often, but on the occasions that I have, and they're all going to be upside down now, aren't they? On the occasions that I have got this deck out and worked with it, it has actually given me some quite powerful and um, profound answers to my questions. You know, we've got things here, the child I was meant to be sacrifice obsession black flower fragrance anger and chains masquerade let's have a quick little look at what it says about masquerade 15 Oh, it's not page 15, is it? It's number 15. Duh. So where are we? <clears throat> so this is part of the bargaining stage. What I can't have forever, I will have for a minute. What I can't have for a minute, I will hold to me for one second. There is often guilt in taking the mask of Don Juan. The seducer is not a master of love, neither of manipulation. He is the master of the ethereal. Ooh. There is guilt out of indifference because when you don't care, you cheat yourself out of meaning and value. Sometimes there is guilt in the selflessness, in the desire itself, in everything leading to pleasure. As if the only pleasure that can be sacred are only those labelled as such. The masquerade is a dance. It is a road that goes in circles and ebbs and flows and always ends with a first lie. Before the time comes, hold it tightly, and when the time comes, let it go. So that's about coming to terms, isn't it, with a loss of some kind. What have we got there? Parasite. So as you can see, um, it's definitely a deck of shadow work and... Um, probably wouldn't come out too often um the next deck i've got here is beautiful deck have i got that upside down as well yes so this is the sacred destiny deck and this comes in this box here um it is by um, um, um hay house and Denise Lynn. So that's really nice. This is one of my favourite um, oracle decks, actually. It comes with this beautiful, chunky little guidebook. It's a 52 card book. And um, everything about this, this deck is beautiful. So we've got their action, opportunity. Oneness, wisdom, potential, security, release, solitude. So let's have a look at solitude. So what does it say here about this? 
The sacred landscape wants you to know, spend some time alone. In your life, this means to take your own counsel rather than relying on the opinions and dictates of others. Break away from the crowd, be on your own. This card also speaks of self-resourcefulness, self-reliance and a tenacious individuality. If you are working on a project, trust your instincts and follow your own lead. Your creativity is at its peak, let it flow. If you're in a relationship that is disempowering, this card suggests that it's time to step away. Take time to reassess your life and in your solitude you will thrive. This card also suggests a safe haven and a sacred womb for self-transformation. So there we go. Simplicity. Patience. That's beautiful, isn't it? These are really just simple um, voyage or truth. These are very nature based and very beautiful, simple um, oracle cards that I love, actually, that are very reassuring and very soothing when I do look at them. Uh, the next deck I've got here, I don't have a guide, but I'm, I mean, I don't have a box for this deck because this deck is very old. This is my goddess guidance oracle cards this is Doreen Virtue <laughs> this is Hay House again and I think oh can you hear that can you hear the creaking of this little guidebook this is 2004 and I think I bought this when it was new brand new so this is almost 20 years old isn't it and you know this is still I think my absolute favorite oracle deck out of all of them I just absolutely love this deck um, it has beautiful gold gilding on it which after 20 years is still still intact still beautiful these are lovely lovely cards so we've got Artemis Guardian Mother Mary, Expect a Miracle, Maeve, Cycles and Rhythms, Pele, Divine Passion, Rhiannon, Sorceress, Athena, Inner Wisdom, aren't they beautiful, Vesta, Home, Sekhmet, Be Strong, Kuan Yin, Compassion, Una, I think that is, Easy Does It, I think she's an Irish goddess, isn't she? Green Tara, Start Delegating, Damara, Guiding Children, Matt, Fairness, let's have a look at Matt, shall we? Hope I've pronounced that correctly. Where are we? So, the message from Matt. Let me suggest another definition for fairness. It's when all parties involved surrender their personal agendas in favour of the greater good for the entirety of the group. This requires trust in the wisdom of the whole. So, various meanings of this card. A lawsuit will be resolved. A dispute will end harmoniously. You'll be treated fairly. Keep everyone's needs in mind. Release guilt and shame as these emotions can attract a punishing attack. And it says that Matt is the Egyptian goddess of integrity, fairness and justice who holds a scale that measures souls against a feather at the time of death to detect any heaviness from guilt. Call upon her before signing any contract or during a dispute or whenever you feel guilty or remorseful. So, as you can see, it is a truly beautiful deck. I saw 
Mary Magdalene, Yemena, Sarasvati, beautiful. I um, I should use this deck more often, to be honest. Um, what have we got next? Uh, so this next deck is Angels Among Us. I do have the box for this. This is um, a deck that I bought maybe only a year or so ago, I think. I wasn't sure that I was going to like it. It was very cheap, I think, on eBay. Um, and I really wasn't sure if I was going to like it. It's by Rockpool and um, it's by Victoria Maxwell and illustrated by Ellie Grant. I have to say, considering um, that it's quite sort of young looking, I suppose, in the characters of the cards, I actually really do like it. This is the guidebook that's come with it. And it's a really, really good guidebook, actually. It's very thorough. So we've got Mary Magdalene. And we've, we've not only got angels here, but we've got gods, goddesses, ascended masters. We've got all sorts of um, people. I like that there's keywords on the cards. Got Thotha, Guru Ramada, Ram Daz, Ram Daz, Archangel Jeremiah, Goddess Isis, Baba Yaga, Saint Bridget. Merlin, wow, Archangel Zadkael, Goddess Lakshmi, look at that, beautiful, let's have a look at Lakshmi actually, let's see what it says, Goddesses, there we are. Goddess Lakshmi is the Hindu goddess of prosperity, fortune and beauty. She is respected and revered in the Buddhist and Jain paths, as well as New Age and other spiritual belief systems. She's a goddess of wealth that can be called upon for any issues relating to money. Uh, we've got, this is a brilliant little guidebook actually, if you can see that there. We've got bits on love and relationships. Um, interpretations based on the home, money, well-being, spirituality and call on Lakshmi for assistance with needing money, manifesting money, feeling abundant, seeing the richness of your own beauty, bills, promotions, pay rises. Wow, uh, yeah, really nice. Jesus. Lord Ganesh, <laughs> St. Francis, I don't know about you but I look at these pictures and they seem familiar to me like I have seen these people on TV or I don't know wandering down the street somewhere or other, Horace, Raphael, He's got a little bit of a look of Jon Snow about him, hasn't he, from Game of Thrones. <laughs> so, really, really nice cards, edged in pink. I didn't do that, by the way. They were edged when I bought them. I've edged quite a few of my tarot decks yet now, but I haven't started on any of my oracle decks. I wonder whether I will. So the next, um, I've got three more decks to show you. So the next deck is the Earth Magic deck that comes in this box. Um, this was bought for me um, by my friend um, a year or so ago, I think. This is a 48 card deck. It's by Stephen Farmer. 
Um, I've got another one of Stephen Farmer's decks, actually. It's a Hay House deck. Um, I really like Stephen Farmer's decks, actually. And it comes with this really, really nice, chunky little guidebook. Beautiful cards. As the name would suggest, all nature-based, all earth-based. But really, really very intuitive. I find these cards. Dragonfly Emergence. Look at that. That's stunning. DNA Karma. Stone People Vigilance. The Whale Breach. Waterfall Effortless. Volcano Volatility. Do you see what I mean? They're, even though they only have one keyword as such on them, they are extremely intuitive. Cloud Shapeshifting. So you don't really need any other words, do you, to describe clouds? They are ever-changing. Island Solitude. Love, Compassion. Dawn, new beginnings. Let's have a look at that. Well, there we go. So the start of the new day brings with it reassurance that the night has passed, making way for new opportunities no matter what has come before. It reminds us of the predictability of daily cycles, that first light that forecasts the sun's appearance and awakens the winged ones who sing and chirp happily at the advent of another morning. This is the time to say farewell to the old and honour the new by releasing any self-imposed constraints or resistance to the truth that you know. This is your chance to develop that project you've been thinking about or embark on that adventure you've dreamt of going on. As this prospect becomes increasingly visible and real, just like the dawn, Doubts and insecurities may arise, but rest assured, just as dawn inevitably turns into day, by heeding your inner guidance, you will succeed. So there we go. Lake stillness. Ocean ebb and flow. New moon, a promise. Do you see what I mean? There's really not a lot written on these cards but it's enough isn't it they are extremely intuitive autumn release milky way perspective dream time creation so there we go that is a deck that i do use a fair amount actually both in my readings on youtube and um, for myself it's one of my favourite decks um, and then these last two decks I don't have boxes for again these are really really old decks I think I bought these probably around about the time that they were released this is 2005 by Stephen Farmer and I would say I've probably had this deck for those 18 or so years. Um, I don't know who is this deck by other than Stephen Hahn. So this is Hay House again, isn't it? So yeah, I think I must have had this deck maybe 18 years and it's Power Animals Oracle deck. And again, this is one of my absolute favourites. I use this an awful lot, not only in readings, but for myself. And to be honest, this is a deck that you don't even really need the guidebook for. It has a keyword and it has a little sentence on it. And I find that often that is enough. Bear, boundary, stand your ground. You know, I'll often use this deck to kind of set the scene um, for a tarot reading. 
links, discernment, look beyond your immediate appearances. The possum strategy, have a backup plan. Otter, surrender, let go of control. I don't know why they chose the otter for that one, but there you go. Swan, grace, appreciate the beauty inside and all around you. Frog, purification, clear out the clutter. Owl, omens, pay attention to the signs. Whale, your soul's path, honour your soul's purpose. And I actually wrote, um, I actually wrote a poem about the whale. I've got it over here, actually. I was going to do a little video on this um, poem at some point. I probably will do that, actually. And I wrote that like maybe 18 years ago when I first got this deck. Hummingbird, joy. Wolf, guardian, you are safe and protected at all times. Giraffe, foresight, you are able to see what is in store for the future. Let's have a little look at the book quickly. It says it's easy to get your nose stuck to the ground and only pay attention to what's right in front of you. This is especially true when the world is making hundreds of demands on you and there's no time to stop and assess where you're going with all of this. The delusions of urgency that grip so many humans. Oh God, don't you know it? They prevent you from looking ahead and from taking the time to look into the future and consider the consequences of your present actions. Yes, it's good to live in the present. Yeah, at the same time, it can be equally important to see what lies ahead and set your sights accordingly. Yeah, I love this deck. I absolutely love it. It is just filled with um, common sense and um, really healthy guidance, I think, for me. Um, and this last deck actually is another one that I've had for many years. I think this was bought new when the deck was released. This is another Hay House deck. This is by Sonia Croquette and this is 2006. So that would mean I've had this deck for like 17 years. It's the Soul's Lessons and Soul Purpose Oracle cards. And... Um, there's 63 cards in this deck. And again, th this is one of my favourites. I think that's the trouble with a lot of my Oracle decks, actually, is I've got, you know, half a dozen real favourites. And I tend to go back to those more than anything. Now, this deck I do use the guidebook with always because... There's not a lot of intuitive information on these cards. Um, the guidebook is fantastic. Be decisive. Correct your mistakes. <laughs> Become a clear channel. Be creative. Face your adversaries. <laughs> love your spirit oops look forward reevaluate your priorities see i say they're not very intuitive but as we look here we can see <laughs> her dress has caught fire so i guess her priorities have changed there haven't they from what they might have originally been Bust out of your cocoon. Be open to love. The creative no. Shine your light. Ask with sincerity. Let's have a look at that. Number 17. So the universe is available to assist you, but only if you have the state of mind and spirit to receive that direction. It will guide you, but it won't agree with you. 
So before you ask for insight, you must be sincere in wanting it. Your soul's purpose right now is to be receptive to what the universe has to offer. Are you prepared to listen to that higher direction, even if it means a change of plan? Or do you simply want the universe to agree with you and make the world do things your way? If it's the latter, you are wasting your time. Your soul's lesson is to release all your preconceived beliefs and attitudes about how things must work out. Let the universe show you a new way. Trust that it has a better plan. Clear your mind completely and wait for guidance. It will come and it will surprise and reward you with its insight. Wow. Revive the dormant. Keep your commitments. <laughs> Have faith. Accept disappointments gracefully. <laughs> that would be something that um, would be important to all of us, wouldn't it? So there we go. There's the first um, lot of my decks. I think that was one, two, three, four, five, six, eight decks, maybe. One, two, three, four, five, six seven okay seven or eight decks I don't know I'm not sure but anyway I hope you enjoyed seeing those and um, I'll be back in a week or so um, with another video um, showing the rest of my oracle decks I think I'll probably have to do three to four videos to get through them all but um, I hope you enjoyed that please do say hello and um, I shall see you all again soon thank you